if you're not through eating, just go ahead and eat. Um, not hurting anything. So I'd like to thank uh, Slick Back Outdoors for catering the meal. Let's give them a round of applause. It was really good. I just got a few announcements. Um, the Christmas Gala. I'd like to thank everybody who sponsored the gala and wanted to congratulate all the award winners and thank the membership for attending. Uh, we really appreciate your support. It was real successful. So now, um, oh, we will um, be announcing uh, the first quarter Chamber Excellence uh, Award next month, so be looking for that. I want to draw for the February sponsor, sponsor uh, Joey Raymond Castling. Okay. And the door prize winner, get your tickets out. 608811. You're going to be getting tickets um, to Rock the Dam Fest here in Ohio County. Sponsored by the Beaver Dam Tourism. Thank you for giving those gifts. And I want to remind everybody about the Dollar for Scholars. We have the little pot back there. We will be um, adding that to the budget for someone to receive an award, scholarship award. Does anybody have any announcements? Chase? Yeah. Can everybody hear me? Uh, Corey Geary couldn't make it today, but uh, I agreed to pass along this message from her. She says, uh, Ohio County Relay for Life is an event that's been going on in our community for 18 years. This year we have decided to join the group Stand Up to Cancer, which is another nonprofit organization that helps in cancer research, survivorship, and support for caregivers. We have made some great changes for our event, which is June 7th from 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. Uh, this year our location has moved from the high school and will now be at 2nd Street on Beaver Dam thanks to Paul Sandiford and Joe Beth Embry. <coughs> As the leadership chair of this event, we are reaching out for support in any form to keep this important night for our cancer survivors going. Whether it is creating a team for the event, making a donation, volunteering to help that night, or anything you would like to do, we would greatly appreciate it. If you know any survivors we would like to be a part, uh, that would like to be a part of this, uh, please contact us as well. Uh, you can add an email for her, or you can personally message her, Tori Geary, on Facebook, and she looks forward to hearing from you. Thank you. I'd like to welcome Jason Hassert with uh, Senator Paul's office. You weren't here earlier, so do you, you want to say anything? Certainly. Thank you. I apologize I was running late. I uh, just wanted to share that Senator Paul uh, was very concerned about the Paradise Coal Fire Plant PDA in Muhlenberg County. I know that also impacts Ohio County. Senator Paul is very pro coal. We're working hard to make sure that that plant remains open and will continue to do so, uh, working with PDA and other partners in the community to try to make sure that we keep on burning that coal. So thank you very much. And I know the Senator will look forward to visiting Ohio County sometime this spring and visiting with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. And now I want to call on Brian Belcher, our Vice President, to introduce our speakers. Good afternoon. It's a new year, so we have time to reflect back upon the last year, and I look forward to some exciting things that are coming up uh, this coming year. And so today's program is going to include three different speakers. Our first speaker will be uh, Jody Fleener from Ohio County Tourism. She's going to speak with us, give us kind of an update from uh, last year, and then let us know some exciting things to go. So please welcome Ms. Jody Fleener. Well, thank you very much. Um, I am thrilled that we can do this today and to, for Paul to do it and the judge to catch up. Um, we're all Ohio Countyans and it's all important to us what happens within our county. When we pull this up, some of you that were here in 2015, 16, will see that um, I just tweaked a slide presentation that I did at that time 
And at that time, we just, we realized what a tourist was, why tourism was important, and basically a tourist is anybody that comes to enjoy another area, and the state defines it with being 50 miles away. So um, what my job is, is to uh, help bring tourism into Ohio County from other areas. I work to promote what we have here and to bring people in so they can spend their money and uh, help us with the um, economic impact that tourism creates. Ready? No, but oh, I'm on my way. Okay. <laughs> And uh, I don't sing or dance, so <laughs> I'll go to this. What you have on your table will be the end of my presentation. And one of the things that came back that does uh, do great things for our community was the Jerusalem Ridge Festival came back. Um, it had not been at the Ridge since 2011. It, we battled a lot of different things bringing it back, but one of the main things that was happening was it had been hosted in another uh, venue, and go. he had canceled quite often. Oh, thank you. And so I was still getting calls the Tuesday that we were going to open on Thursday of people saying, are, if I'm in Pennsylvania, if I leave, are you going to cancel? And we were like, nope, come on. So we had a gorgeous weekend. Everything was great, and uh, the festival was a big hit. So. I don't, can anybody just like raise your hand when you were here before and the festival was around and saw the impact that that thing did to you, Vince? Yep, yep. So, yep. <laughs> so, um, I heard, uh, I know Rodney said, he said that that was the best uh, two weeks that he had all year long. So, it'll keep growing and we'll keep doing that. This is on your tables because we, are always looking for support to host it. So if anybody's interested, just fill it out and get back to me. So, okay, welcome. And okay, Chase, what do I hit? Just the return button? Either the right arrow or enter. Okay, all right. <clears throat> when I was here before, we played the game of um, Hangman. And the purpose was to get you to realize that tourism was the second largest industry in Kentucky. It still is. That was true in 2016. Data came out for 2019. It still is the second biggest impact. These were the numbers that I shared with you at that time. Um, in 2015, I think you could all see it, but um, 11 million was the total tourist spending in 2015. That jumped up to 14 in 2018. The worker income, 2 million, jumped up to 3 million. Local tax revenue was um, created by this, was 153, went to 198,000. The one I really particularly like is supported jobs locally for, this is Ohio County stats. Supported jobs in 2015 was 155. That figure in 2018 jumped up to 306. So, and then the genera generated daily uh, worker paycheck had jumped up and they, they figured the value for a daily. People that work in the tourism business, now these are restaurant uh, waitresses, things like that, that are serving everyone, as 8,800. That jumped up another thousand. So you can tell that tourism is still building and building and becoming a bigger impact. <clears throat> this one I particularly like to present to our fiscal court <laughs> because it breaks down that in 2015, we had 8,573 households, and because of tourism, each household paid $139 less in local and state taxes. That number jumped in 2018 to $175 less. <coughs> so um, tourism, you don't think of it as something that really helps you, but it does. Because when they come in here and spend their money, we don't have to spend our money. So <laughs> we like it when they come in. They're still coming for the same reasons to Ohio County. They're coming for our heritage. Bill still remains the number one attraction. Um, this year, we opened in April. Uh, we opened the Bill Monroe Museum. It has been doing a fantastic job bringing people in. Uh, the barn, I just mentioned the festival, and the amphitheater has really kicked off having such good entertainment. When I go to regional or state events, 
When I say I'm from Beaverdam, they always say, oh my gosh, the talent you're bringing into amphitheater. And I said, that's Beaverdam tourism, and they're doing a great job. So Ohio County is still con considered a one-day trip. Our goal is to make us a weekend stop because you spend more money on a weekend than you do in a day. So things that are happening that help that, there's the scenes and sounds of Rosine. It's all about a bluegrass trail. And I really want you to know that Owensboro is collaborating with us on that. We are becoming a team. The whole story starts with starting at Bill's, going around all of Rosine, and then take it over to Owensboro to see what they did internationally. And um, we're, that relationship is really uh, blossoming. The Cowboy Fast Draw, that brings people in for a three to four day stay that they're here for the state championships and three different things during the year. They'll come for an overnight. <coughs> the Rosine Barn still brings people in. They drive in to come to the barn. Our Beagle Runs, they're, they're coming and staying for that. Jerusalem Ridge will bring them in now for a week, sometimes even longer. We had people arriving on Monday when it was gonna start on Thursday. The sounds on second, that's, as that grows and grows and grows, people will come in because, you know, for years we've had people going over to Owensboro for their sounds on uh, their first, first or something. So that's gonna come and that's gonna eventually bring the people here as it grows and grows. And the Ray Chapman Baseball Complex. When they do that, it's funny to think of like a participant as a tourist like that, but they really are <coughs> because those kids come in and play, their parents come, their grandparents come, they gotta eat and mothers get bored, and they go shopping. So all that brings in more economic development to our area. A couple of more just figures I wanna share with you from uh, 2018. The home place saw 1,291 visitors last year, and it closes December through, through March, through February. They came from 43 different states. They came from 13 foreign <coughs> countries. 71 of those visitors were from foreign countries. Kentucky saw 604 tourists, and 84 of them were from Ohio County. There were 11 bus tours, five of them being from foreign countries. Cowboy Fast Draw, I just did the state tournament, that's the only one I do data on. They brought in a total of 165 people, and they came from 15 different states, and only 31 of them were from Kentucky. The Ridge saw 1,045 uh, people. I'm expecting triple. I'm not going to say double because everybody said they're coming back. They're all bringing someone with them, so I think we're going to triple that this year. 23 states were represented in two foreign countries. Did not do the data for Kentucky. The museum, since it opened in um, April, we started taking, I think we started taking data and, and realizing that we needed to uh, get this gathered up in mid-May. So in mid-May till the end of December, we've seen 624 people at the museum. That includes 33 states and 13 foreign countries have been to the museum already. So, um, Kentucky, we had a two, 208 visitors. So what's coming up? Statewise, this is the year of culinary. They <coughs> kicked it off real big last year, and they, the, the um, state parks are doing it and things, and uh, we have it here. In fact, we have it here with Slick Back. It's mutton, uh, baked beans, coleslaw, strawberry uh, lemonade and banana pudding, or, or peach cobbler. So they're just pushing that. They did that in 2018. They're carrying it over to 2019 because if anybody's watching Top Chef, it's being filmed in Louisville for six of the events. They've already filled it. And when they're there and they're promoting it, they're promoting the rest of the state as well. So culinary is still the big thing, and I'm really fired up for 2020. 2020 is going to be Kentucky's year of music. So I think that's going to do great things for Beaver Dam and Ohio County because we do have the music here. Locally, um, just a few things that are coming up. January 26th, we have a fundraiser for the museum. There will be three bands playing at the community center. So if you've never heard bluegrass, come on out and hear it. The home place will reopen in March. The barn opens in April. Sounds and seconds start in uh, 
when the weather breaks, the amphitheater will kick off its summer, summer conference. The community festivals that all our little areas have, center towns in Fordsville bring people in from all over. Those, those two are huge. If you've never been there just yourself, just go run up and see what the, those communities are doing. They, they bring people in. And of course our fishing and hunting seasons rotate throughout the year and that all brings people in. Okay, this little girl says, if you haven't listened to bluegrass at least once, I don't know if you can call yourself an Ohio <laughs> County. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you very much. If anyone has any questions. Thank you, Joey, for the update. Next up, we have Joe Beth Embry from Beaver Dam Tourism to give us an update on some exciting things that have occurred and some things that are on its way. Did you do it again? No, I got it up this time, I think. I don't have a PowerPoint. Well, you don't? Good. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll just leave it at that then. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the Chamber for allowing us to sponsor today's meeting. Um, we just wanted to take this opportunity to kind of reflect on 2018 and let you know what's happening in 2019 that we have planned so far. Um, we had a lot of success, success in 2018 with our summer concert series along with Sounds on Second, and several festivals and um, several sponsorships of other events in the community. And so learning from that, we as a commission decided to be very selective this year with our concerts. And so far we have, um, officially booked three um, working on a fourth this week and should have about four other ones to roll out after that so I'm hoping um, in the upcoming weeks you should see an announcement about our second one to go on sale the first one we put on sale was the 80s rocks the dam festival and this will be our second year for that we really hit um, we really hit it home with that one um, something about that 80s rock genre just really seemed to resonate with people in this area um, and in 27 other states and so we decided to make that an annual event and so this year we have warrant slaughter autograph and night ranger coming that'll be july 20th um, as of this morning we've sold 754 tickets and we haven't spent any money on advertising yet so that's a good that's a good thing those are all people repeat customers from last year that were very interested in the lineup they were ready to buy before we even announced who was coming so that's a good thing um, and I think the Commission has done a really good job as far as looking at this upcoming season and several different genres and I, I think we're gonna have a really well-rounded season um, and I think um, that that will translate into more tourism for our area and so we're really trying to hit different different groups and just learning from the past and what has been successful so I think that you will see those announcements start to roll out um, I did want to take this opportunity to mention I'm the only employee at this point and so it takes about a hundred people to pull off a concert and so if, if you ever know of anyone that is interested in helping or being involved with the amphitheater we would love to have them on board we have some great teenagers that work for us that just love music and they want to be a part of it and so they come work for us for a couple days before and volunteer it's volunteer hours and then they get to watch the concert and so if you know of anyone that that might fit with um, we are always looking for good help um, in addition to businesses if your business ever wants to be a part of what we're doing at the amphitheater it takes a lot of people and we try to support as many local businesses through our concerts as possible so if you want to be a part of it let us know we would love love to work with you um, I didn't bring a PowerPoint, but I would love for y'all to go visit our website if you if you have time. It's beaverdamtourism.com. We feature um, three local photographers. They do all of our photography at concerts, and um, there are some awesome pictures on there, not just of concerts, but of Beaverdam in general, of different businesses, and also some of our festivals that we have every year. So Strawberry Festival, the Christmas Festival, and we're going to continue our Oktoberfest this year um, in October. And so um, you can see lots of different... Um, local photographers work on there we love supporting them and so that's something that you can check out at our website that's where the tickets are on sale as well um, as some other information one thing that we have really learned in 2018 was that as online sales grow people aren't going shopping necessarily out of necessity they're spending a day for an experience because shopping has become very easy you know I can order my groceries from my couch so people don't have as much time 
that they have to spend on that. So now they want the experience, and we see people traveling further for that experience. And so we're tr really trying to use our uniqueness in Beaver Dam and countywide um, to make not just a con not just a concert, but a whole day or a whole weekend experience for people. And that's something every every time that we're at the amphitheater working all day on a show, we have people driving up at 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. The show doesn't start till seven. And they're asking, "What do we do? What, you know, what would you recommend?" And I think people appreciate the small townness of that because we're able to say, "Oh, you know, you need to go here, and you need to order this, or you need to visit this store and check out this." Um, and so that's something that we're really trying to go even more so into 2019 is is the experience the, of the whole town. You know, where to eat and where to shop and where to go and what to do before the concert and maybe even the day after the concert. And so if there's ever a way that we can help promote your business in that respect, we would love to feature you on our website or our Instagram or our Facebook because people want more than just the concert and that's what we're really trying to offer them. So please keep that in mind if there's ever a special promotion that we can help promote through tourism, we would love to do that because we really see people coming in for the shopping and the eating and the concerts and all of the other things that we have to offer. So just something to keep in mind. We are going to continue our Sounds on Second series this year and we're working with Beef O'Brady's as well as our new microbrewery um, to bring that. And so that'll be every Friday in June and July but the first Friday will be Relay for Life, like Chase said. Um, and so we're hoping that that's going to bring a lot of attention to local business as well, um, keeping people local on a Friday night so they're spending their money locally rather than going somewhere else is always the goal. Um, we're also going to try something new this year, and it might be something that you would want to consider, is that we're going to feature a local business as kind of highlighted every Friday night. We're going to try to do that, and so rather than people hearing me every Friday night, they'll get to hear someone else talk and kind of promote a local business. So if you think that that would work for you or your business on a Friday night, please talk to me and let me know because um, I'm already working on scheduling all of those. But we just thought it would bring something different and another unique way to kind of highlight businesses on Friday nights through downtown. Um, we will also, as always, have all of our festivals, um, lots of concert announcements coming up, and I think that's everything that I had to say. I did, I did want to mention we had over... Um, 30, we sold to over 30 states last year, tickets to over 30 states, and th that's a customer database that we have worked to keep, and so I've just set a personal goal that we'll sell a ticket to every state this year. Um, so if you know anybody in Hawaii or Alaska that wants to come to a concert, those are kind of difficult ones to get. Um, and I think we had one with the Prime Show, we um, had sold to almost every county in Kentucky, and so I've also set a personal goal to sell a concert ticket to every county in Kentucky this year, so I think that'll be That'll be something unique. As always, we're always working on recruiting new businesses for Beaver Dam um, as we continue to grow and, and we can support those. I think that'll be great as well. So if you ever have any ideas, they, they can even be odd ideas. We take them all um, for different musicians, bands, or just tourism in general. Um, our commission, we have a running list of ideas. So if you ever just think of something that may be a way to help local businesses, um, we really do appreciate it. And I did want to mention um, both here from the park. The park has really helped us. Um, I think there were three shows this past year where the park was completely full with campers. And so that is something that there was a need um, for shuttling. And so we've been working with Bo and he offered a shuttle service from the park to the amphitheater. And we, we really love when that happens because if you've ever driven from here to the amphitheater, you see just about everything we have to offer in a very short trip. And so that allows people to see, oh, you know, I'm not just going to a concert. They see every business along the way, or just about every business. And so we love that they're willing to do that. We have also a few people that have become Lyft drivers because we don't have a public transportation system here. We're really relying on other people, especially with us bringing alcohol to the amphitheater. We really want people to get home safe, or at least to the hotel safe or the campground safe. So if you know anyone that would want to earn some extra revenue through Lyft driving, um, we are relying on that for this upcoming season and we will be promoting that as well. Um, or if you want to open an Airbnb, we always need people to host um, either sometimes musicians, but also just people coming to concerts because we are filling the hotels and the camp campground at this point just about every show. So until we can get some more accommodations, 
I would love if anyone is interested in Airbnb, you can, um, there's lots of resources online about how to do that and it's a great source of additional income. So we're hoping that that will additionally drive the economy, not just through business, but also through some of those services as well. So if you ever have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me um, or the commission. We would love to hear your ideas. Thank you. Thank you, Jill Beth. It sounds like we have a lot of exciting things coming up this spring and summer uh, from our tourism sector. So um, appreciate you all both coming in and providing that information to us. Um, last but certainly not least, our judge executive, David Johnston, is going to give us a state of the county update. And the floor is all yours, sir. Thank you for being here. Thanks a lot, and uh, thank you, Chamber, for allowing me to come back. This is my ninth time to do this, uh, and I'm, I'm really uh, proud of that. Uh, there's not been very many that's, that's been here that long. Uh, one of, uh, of a group of two that's ever held this office this long. Um, the state of our county is good. It really is. Um, on the back to my introduction, I appreciate the park folks from come, Mary and Bo from the park for coming over, as well as as Ann, Renetta, Miranda, and Josh for coming from my office, and and uh, Chase sort of, but he's here on other uh, other things. But anyway, um, let me repeat: the state of our county is good. Uh, we're in a nearly sixteen million dollar budget this time for the county government, which is. Uh, it's so much more than it was 20, 30 years ago. I mean, it's just uh, folks that uh, served in county government in the 80s and 90s just could not imagine having the resources this county has at this time. Uh, our economy is strong here now, but it's changing. Uh, I like to use the phrase, we're still coal county, uh, but all of our eggs are not in the coal basket. There's so many other things here, you know, from manufacturing to uh, processing to uh, all the other industries we have here. And of course, to even tourism is a big part of our economy now. So, so even though we appreciate coal very much, and it's still a very big part of our county, it's not, it's not all of it. It's not all we have anymore. Um, our roads is the issue that everybody always wants to talk about. My, my thing is I want to within the next very few years to get that to something we don't have to talk about and we move on to other things quality of life issues and things but with that said our roads are getting better all the time and this spring there will be a record amount of pavement put down that's ever been in the county uh, it's, it's just going to be amazing how much it is um, one reason is we didn't get to do our fall paving or not very much of it so it'll be done as well as all that we normally would do this year it's all going to going to happen pretty quickly um, and and part, one of those reasons is if we have such a good relationship with our state government and our uh, the governor's office that everything's just lined up for us and we're getting we've already on target and purchase ordered out uh, nearly $400,000 worth of uh, the governor's discretionary money for transportation. We've got another half a million on track uh, this spring, as well as our, our normal road funding. And uh, those things are going to be getting so much better uh, in, in the next few years. And, and especially this year that we're in, it's going to be a lot of it. Like I said, if we ever get that done, where that's not what everybody wants to talk about, then we can move on. Uh, the uh, we, we identified last year that one of our big uh, things that we had that, to work on was workforce development. Well, we're doing it. We're, all of our numbers pertaining to workforce development is going up. Dropout rate going down, educational attainment going up, and we're on track to be a, a, a work-ready community soon. We're work-ready in process at this time, and it's all coming together. Um, June the 15th of this year, uh, Natural Parkway will be Interstate 165. About the and and uh, 
there are some work will continue for five years to bring it up to all the interstate standards but it'll be good enough at that time and the signs are going up and the designation will be there and I think that's really big for for uh, this county uh, another thing that's really good for us is uh, our relationship with the state and the federal government uh, Senator Paul Congressman Comer and uh, Senator McConnell all uh, loves Ohio County and will be watching out for us and like I said everything is uh, everything is, is aligned for us to to work for our, our county and I really do expect some big things to happen and of course we had two reports on tourism which is very good tourism is very important to this county and uh, I'll tell both of you ladies you need me for anything anytime I'll be there uh, I think I'm the only county judge in this area anyway that will show up for a group you have coming in. I'll, I'll sing them a couple songs and tell them a couple stories. And um, if you need me, I'm there. Uh, one challenge for tourism is, especially the county tourism, is we do not have enough uh, hotels. Uh, we And I know uh, Mayor Sandifer and I talk about this all the time. Every time I sing, I know he is working on something. <coughs> He'll share it when he gets ready to. But uh, we, we, that's our biggest need we need for tourism right now. The reason being, when we have an event, which we do, we're filling up hotels in Owensboro and Central City and other places, and we don't get any room tax from them. We need one here, so we get it to do more promotion for, for, the, uh, for our county. Um, there are some challenges that uh, I want to bring up to you that our county does have some challenges most everything's good we're still the best place in the world to live there's no doubt about that but we do have some challenges challenges and to get this road thing off of the conversation list I desperately need our fiscal court to give me a road plan we don't need to every time we get road funds to go in and try to split it up by some kind of formula or divide it and move it around. We need a plan that when we get funds, we know exactly where we're going, where the next road, the next mile of road is that's going to get improved, repaired, whatever, and have that in place. And that's essential for us to do. And uh, I'm telling you too, so you can tell your magistrates if you see them, that, hey, give that judge that plan so he can get, keep move on. Um, I did hint that if coal production goes down, we're okay in a lot of ways. But there's, there's one big challenge. Uh, our coal severance money totally has funded our fire and ambulance. Uh, so we need to get that paid for another way. Did you know that if everybody paid their fire dues when they get them, it would pay for the, it would pay for the fire fighters, everything we give the firefighters? as well as the ambulance if everyone paid them that when they got their car not that's not going to happen as long as it's voluntary um, i want uh, either to have those fire dues put on the tax bill or as a or us to establish a fire district and uh, then the fire district would be responsible would have the authority to collect those uh, dues or uh, collect the fees needed in one way or the other. And of course, uh, like I said, if the dues were paid, there's, the math is there, there's enough to take care of all of it. Um, and another thing we need here, we have no protection for you. If you live outside the cities of Beaverdam and Hartford, you have no protection as a property owner of any type. Uh, you can build anything you want to and have your children plant in the yard and they can put, uh, I don't want to pick on it, but I can't think of anything worse, hog farm next door to you, or any kind of heavy, uh, heavy industry, or anything can go right next to you, because there's absolutely no county planning. There's not any, any uh, thing to you to do it about a nuisance to you unless you sue that person. I mean, so you don't really have any protection in place. We need that. It don't need to be have to be a ridiculous planning and zoning thing, but we need something. And uh, I, I don't, whether we call it planning or zoning or we call it something else, this county desperately needs some planning. 
and uh, and I will be appointing a committee right away on that. And some of you that are here will be asked to to serve on that, to look into it and bring back the recommendations to to the county the fiscal court to do that. Um, another big challenge we have is our jail. Our jail built in 1941. It's still open. Our jailer does a wonderful job of keeping it open. It's the only one of its type in the state. Uh, it's a, uh, it does everything that any other jail does, but without the full service designation, we get no state money. We completely, this county funds that uh, jail. And, uh, and that's not the case in other, other counties. They, that has a, what they call full service jail. They get, they get the funding from state, we don't get it. Uh, we can keep people in our jail five years while they're waiting to go to trial, totally at the county's expense. The minute they get sentenced, they go to another county jail and the, and the state pays them about $30 a day for that inmate. We never get any of that. We can keep them forever as long as we're paying the bill. So we never get any help. So that's a long story, but I want you all to, to know, know that story. We're going to have to, A, build a new jail, or B, realize that someday we won't have a jail and continue to pay the fat prices we're paying now to, uh, to take care of our jail. Like so we said right now, it every bit comes out of the county's pocket, take care of it. Uh, so that's a challenge, and uh, we're going to get that in the news, and we're going to be working a lot. You'll be hearing a lot about that in the next year, about plans, how we're going to address that. Um, another thing to uh, uh, to our growth in the county to our recruiting businesses that sort of thing we found out and this is a state level we realize uh, affordable housing that's affordable to working families the state has identified it's a, hundred, a house that can sell for $125,000 or less uh, I think in Ohio County the target may even need to be lower than that for us. But that, that if we could get somebody to build that kind of housing and sell, uh, that would really uh, help us recruit new business. Um, the only challenge we have in county government as far as our budget and that sort of thing goes, other than what I named about the jail and things like that, is that uh, uh, the retirement costs and health insurance for our employees has gone up tremendously. So that means that's pretty much going to consume the increases we have with the new businesses and the increased occupational tax that comes into our county. It's pretty much going to be consumed by those, uh, those things, by the uh, health insurance increases. And uh, have one more. I've got a challenge for the chamber. Um, Another thing to help us grow, we need to have uh, more intercultural activities and inclusion, social inclusion for our, uh, for, for our new citizens that's in the county and hope that more will come, uh, that, uh, that they're different. I'm specifically uh, the Indian uh, community <coughs> have a lot of outreach and can help recruit a lot of business this county they have distribution centers and manufacturing and everything in in the that they're moving into the united states and what they want is to be included in things like i'm looking around uh we don't have any chamber members from from the, those guys um uh, so and, and uh I think that uh, that's something we all need to outreach and try to do is to show more inclusion to our uh, other cultures that are in our community. I think that's going to be real important to growth. I uh, appreciate your uh, time. Like I said, I went a little different. I didn't spend the whole uh, time just bragging on things we'd done. I did post some, some goals, some long range things that we want to do to try to uh, make our county an even better place to live, even though it's already the best on earth. Uh, I do have a minute for questions if I, anybody would have one. I must have been pretty thorough there. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you again for the Chamber for having me. Thank you, Judge. That concludes today's meeting. I uh, want to, uh, one last time, thank Slick Back Outdoors for our meal. Also, like to, yes, please give them a hand. Thank you all. And of course, Beaver Dam Tourism for sponsoring today's uh, meal as well for us. Um, one last thing before you all leave, please uh, direct your attention to our Dollars for Scholars uh, bucket back there. If you have a dollar or two, uh, we would greatly appreciate your donation. That will go to help fund the scholarships that we'll be offering a young man or young woman from our school system here to help them pay for their college expenses. That said, I hope everyone has a great week. We will be back again on February the... When's that? 19th. Have a great week. Brian, Thank you. Brian, real quick. Yes. I think we have a special birthday in the room today. <laughs> Our president, Shannon. Yes. So but I promised her, I said that, I would, that we like her, so we're not going to have everybody sing to her. But please join us in wishing Shannon a happy birthday. <laughs> Have a great week. <laughs>